You're listening to Opinions in Beer. Wow. Yeah. Does that have... That has a whiffer robot voice because of thick yeah. and dark looking. It looks you put a lot of oxygen into the fermenting yeast. They go aerobic and they start multiplying. Great American ale off, but I don't want to drink a bunch of American ales. Cause of death. Dun dun dun. It tastes worse than Bud Light. <laughs> Straight up ten. Hello and welcome to Opinions and Beer. I'm your host, Adam. Today we have a fun episode. We've got Brian Silverbacks and James Marandino here on the show. I can't wait to uh, chat with them and whatnot. But first off, before we get into that, oh, also there's a video version of this. Uh, so please check out Opinions and Beer on Facebook and or The Beer Guys. Uh, check out... Check it out. Check out the video if you want to watch the live video of us chatting. Uh, but, first off, before we do anything, we're going to get into the beer of the day. And today's beer of the day is Slush by the Prairie Artisan Brewing Company. This slushy, ooh, this slush sour... This is a sour ale with strawberry, raspberry, lemon, and lime. Uh, it is 6.1% in alcohol by volume. This is a solid sour ale. It's a, um, it's high for a sour. You know, a lot of sours tend to be 4%, 3%, but uh, it's pretty high for a sour. It has a nice uh, pinkish red color. I like the color on this. It's definitely a uh, slushy type color. Uh, it has a solid head uh, on in the glass and um you know what we got a long episode because we got a long chat so i'm gonna jump right into this this is a solid beer it, it tastes a lot like their christmas beer for some reason but without like the uh christmasy flavors uh like the cinnamon and whatnot and nutmeg and whatever else they put in their christmas uh, beer. You know, it tastes like it tastes like a Jubilee a little bit. It tastes like Jubilee. This beer's gotten a little warm sitting out here. It tastes like a melted slushy though, like a strawberry, raspberry, lemon, lime, melted slushy, slush, melted slush. It's very light and crisp for six percent, for a six percent sour. It's very smooth, and uh, this is an easy drinking, hot summer day beer. And you need a hot, you need a beer that cools you off during the hot summer day when you're wearing a jacket in 80 degree weather. And for that, I'm gonna say that this beer, because this is we're gonna do a, this is a quick review, guys. We got a long episode. We have an we have an hour chat. I have an hour chat. You understand? That's coming up after this review. And because of that hour chat, I'm going to rate this beer, Slush, by Prairie Austrian Ales, a solid 8 out of 10. It's a good beer. This is a good sour. Solid, solid sour. Solid, solid, crisp, smooth, sour. Here's the chat with James Marandino and Brian Silverbacks. Okay, we are officially recording, guys. That took uh, 13 minutes. <laughs> uh, how's everyone doing? How's your days going, everybody? This is Opinions and Beer. We've got, below me, well, now he's small, now he's big, James Marandino. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and to the, uh, to the left of me, we have comic book artist, Comic book creator, Brian Silverbacks. Hey, what's going on? I, I'm just enjoying the the live the live woes of broadcasting. The, wait, what is it? The live woes? Like I, the woes of like, 
you know, the growing pains. Like when I was doing video, I'd be like, oh, shit, we got the wrong angle. Oh, the light's too bright. You need to go back and move it. I need to come over here and sit down and see if I'm at the right angle. Now get back up. Dude, there's so much shit involved when you're doing stuff by yourself or on a low budget. And that's and that's why I originally said I wanted to do it traditionally because our <laughs> the original beer guy show was all video, and we would have uh, and we actually we garnered quite a bit of fan base during the beginning. But my co-host turned vegan and couldn't drink beer with uh, honey in it, and so oh. and so oh. and so that uh, <laughs> and that and so the beer guys folded, uh, and then I brought it back later and I turned it to a uh, audio only podcast entitled Opinions and Beer. And that's where we are. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm uh, sure cuz he doesn't he doesn't drink beer. Well, yeah, well, you can't, Yeah, well, yeah, certain beers you you you're unaware of what it may have in it and if it has animal product as some beers tend to have nowadays, uh, he cannot have it. Like milk. Can like, he <laughs> can he drink wine? Can he drink whiskey? He might, but I think, uh, uh, obviously, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of my videos against veganism, but me and him had a, had a pretty falling out. On <laughs> I didn't care, but he cared deeply about my opinions. <laughs> Therefore, uh... Okay, now, I'm not, against, I'm not against veganism. I'm just not a vegan. I, I don't, I mean, eat what you want to eat. I don't care, you know. I... <laughs> No, I just, <laughs> I just said controversial. I would, I would make controversial remarks regarding animals and uh, whatnot. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> now you were just, you were just stirring shit up just to make content, or were you actually like stating your beliefs? Um, <laughs> a little of both, but this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all about the content, man. It's all about the content. But he didn't tell me. Hey, he didn't tell me it. It upset him until afterwards. At first, I thought it was just he used it as good chemistry. We, we originally we just had good chemistry, and then later, he just got well. He he got a he got this huge breakup, turned vegan, and then couldn't drink beer with me no more, and then kind of just uh, removed me from his uh. life. <laughs> removed me from his life. He made a that friends go. You know, friends. Friends go different ways. It happens. That's what it is. It's what happens. You uh, lost a friend to you lost a friend to veganism. So. That's what that is true. That is true. And I uh, and now they and I and I have a big uh, I have a rival. I have a casualties. I I have a uh, rivalry now with uh, vegans because they won't stop spamming. Actually, the one good thing about COVID nineteen is that they stopped spamming my phone. But uh. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I, all spam, spam. They shut down the spam. They they, they, don't, they can't employ the spammers anymore. That's what it is. Well, I I still have bill collectors that I have to mute. <laughs> <laughs> that nothing shuts that down. Nothing. Okay. Down. <laughs> but uh, uh, and not, also there, also there are not a zombie apocalypse, an asteroid. Nothing stops that. The warranty on my car is expired. Apparently, because I get a lot of phone calls about that on my warranty on my 2005. I, I started getting this. Uh, so. Yeah, Verizon. Verizon wants me to pay the bill. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know I need the... Uh, <laughs> I can't afford to pay goddamn Verizon right now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, special circumstances. I know. There's a, there's a pandemic. I need that, I need that phone. It's uh, essential. It's essential service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh... It's, no, not, a, it's a right, not a luxury. Uh, now, uh, Jane, I don't know how bad it is where you are, uh, uh, Brian, but I know James is in the... It's, he's in the heart of this pandemic. I mean, I'm in fallout. I'm in the middle of the game. I don't keep... I don't watch the news, so I don't know where the fucking middle is. I just know I'm in Atlanta... And everybody in the state of Georgia gets to, or almost everybody gets to go back to work Friday. Yep. Yeah, we never yep, shut guys. down work. <laughs> Our area never shut, yeah. never shut work down. And uh, yeah, I think one person has uh, had passed away. and was like an older, an older teacher, an older gentleman uh, who had, uh, had some heart condition, and he had passed away from uh, COVID. But that's the only uh, case anyone's ever heard of in this area. 
and so it's all rumors. <laughs> it's all rumors. Do you think that? I, I mean, I don't think that COVID even got up to get all the way out to Viter. Uh, you know, it got, I, uh, apparently it got to Beaumont, which is literally, you know, it's like the five minutes. It's five minutes next door. So, I mean, uh, but, uh, but they, I mean, still, but you're in Viter. I mean, like, I mean, they probably just don't even let it in. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. They have a, <laughs> no, uh, no diseases after sundown. It's what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, a, it's like a dry county. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, no, we, our laws changed, uh, last year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We are a wet county now. Okay. We're we're wet as can be. <laughs> See, we're lousy with it out here. We have the plague everywhere. It's it's like New York is is infested. It's, it's crazy, man. You know, it's like that's what it is. You know, some and I think that's where that's probably where a disconnect is coming in with a lot of people is that like you know some places have it to the extreme and then some places aren't even noticing it but they're still being hit with the same restrictions yeah i mean i think we have it without it i mean and and, i mean maybe the tests are wrong but we have more cases than anywhere in the world this is the most right here in new york i don't know what it is maybe because we live we live so close to each other or maybe also that just we do a lot of tests i don't know i don't know it's a lot of people a lot of people have it well and it's a big uh you know, it's a big tourist place. So a lot of people flock there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah. just... But then they go home. So I'm curious, what, like, at some point, when do, when does everybody else start getting it? I don't... Yeah. If, if they ever do. If they ever do. If they ever do. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Some states might be opening up. They might be opening up too soon. I have no idea. I don't I don't know. I'm not a... I'm not a... I'm not a doctor. So I don't... I have no idea. Who is a doctor? <laughs> I don't even believe in doctors. I'm a I'm a Dayquil Nyquil kind of guy. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that that'll come in handy if anything ever really goes wrong. <laughs> That's the Dayquil, Dayquil and Nyquil cures is a cure all for everything, is what I like to say. Dayquil. I, I think it's I, to me it just eat a bowl of broccoli and you're good. Uh, I had a uh, I had a controversial conversation on Facebook with a guy. He's like, I almost died from COVID. I said, Well, you should have took some Nyquil. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, anyways, that's good. Uh, Brian, you've got a uh, yeah. You've got a um, a big art competition right going on right this second for Loggerhead. I did. Uh, well, I do. I created a comic book character called Loggerhead. And it's coming out from Scout Comics, but it was supposed to be coming out next month. And I had done a lot of marketing to lead comic book shops to order the book. And then the, the distributor said, we're not going to distribute comics anymore. So now I'm having to reassess my game plan. And so what I'm doing to increase the awareness is having an art contest where Anybody can draw a version of the loggerhead character and post it to Instagram and follow all the hashtag rules and you could win a slab comic and some original art and some comic books that I didn't write. Like there's all kinds of prizes and stuff. That's yeah, that's legit. I was trying to get my uh, I have a younger sister who's very into uh, into art and drawing and she's won some uh, competitions here and there. And I said, hey, look, you should. Uh uh, draw draw loggerhead for me, and I can uh, I can post it. Well, there is a there is an under twelve category for the artwork, like the, So I will be picking a winner from under twelve, oh, as cool. well as some of the other categories. So, but it, the only way the only the thing about the contest is once at the end of the month at the end of May when all the artwork is collected. Only the people that sent in artwork will be allowed to vote on who wins. So even if, let's say, you wanted to do one, you'd have to convince your friends to vote for you. They would just have to do some sort of doodle of loggerhead and post it and do all the hashtag stuff. And then that, when it came time, they could vote for your piece. That's interesting. But only the people that participate can vote. That's, that's, that's an interesting twist. To the uh, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's cool. And that you know, it makes people you know that way it forces people, hey, uh, to you know to get that loggerhead brand out there, you know, to you know tell their friends like the artists oh, yeah. tell their friends, and they all are drawing. That's a, that's a smart move. Well, I appreciate it. I put a little thought into it when I came up with it. I didn't want to just have a contest where anybody could, you know, the most popular person could win. Like if I had 80 million friends on Facebook, if I got them all to vote yes, then I would win even if my artwork was shit. So I don't, so I'd rather have the 80 million people that entered the contest that also used the appropriate hashtags to create the awareness for the character so you have to enter to play or you have to enter to vote i think i think that's and you can enter as many times as you like but you only get one vote well that's cool that's awesome so uh <laughs> so technically so essentially so for those that don't know but for those that don't know he's like a seven and a half foot tall snapping turtle man so if you're into drawing big ass gnarly looking snapping turtles that kill people <laughs> the t seven foot tall turtle man look james i brought you on here so you can make the turtle man movie <laughs> oh. <laughs> right do you, have, do you have patrons do you do you, do you set up a you know like some i know some people who comics they have a bunch of patrons and then and then you can um they, they subscribe monthly, and you can reveal like um, the process as you're creating. I, content. I do not have a Patreon account. I have a I have a group on Facebook that I use. Uh, it's called Silverbacks HQ, and it's it's really just like I'm giving away information. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to charge people. Like I wish people would just support me and say, "Hey, I'll give you a dollar a month to keep doing cool shit." But um, I want I want I want to encourage more people to create. So the, in Silverbacks HQ, the group on Facebook, it's where a lot of people can go and have their artwork looked at by other people that aren't going to rip them an asshole and be like, "Where'd you learn how to draw?" You know, it's more of a supportive community. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. So that's what I try to cultivate. But so I've posted in there a couple of times trying to convince those uh, the the guys that are in the group, guys and girls, say, hey, you know what? Just for shits and giggles, go ahead and draw your version of Loggerhead. You can't. It, it's you don't you don't you can't lose. Yeah, I mean you're not going to be critical of it. So yeah, why not? Well, no, no. But I'm saying aside aside from the artwork for this contest, when anybody posts in the group. Uh, you can't just say something looks like shit. Like, tell me, tell, tell, tell the person why. Say, but try, and try to do it in a nice way. So constructive criticism is what you're saying, right? Yeah, but sometimes, I mean, there's some real, there's some people that really, really, really want to draw, right? They think that they're going to be great, and they post a piece of artwork, and it is just busted from head to toe. How do you? What comment do you leave for that person? Well. In that instance, I would be, uh, let's go back to the facial anatomy. I would, my comment would read something to like, let's work on getting our face anatomy correct, and then we can start moving our way down the body before we try to tackle such a big project. That's a better way of saying something than to do, why did you even fucking bother picking up the pencil? Both of those are telling the person that they're not ready for prime time, but one of them is a little bit more of, hey, let's 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 start here and then let's build up because you, you're not drawing a comic book on your first time out. Yeah, I can't imagine being that rude. Um, but dude, it's crazy how much like even even on my posts on my social media posts, I have a pretty open Facebook account, and I will just post, uh, you know, some artwork or whatever, and usually the people that follow me are the are, the, are my friends on Facebook. Like, they want to be there, right? So yeah. you would think that they're not trying to figure out a way to blast you, but then sometimes you just get blasted. And I'm like, what the fuck are you even doing here if you just want to blast? Yeah, yeah. No, I totally... I, I have a Facebook page, and if anyone gives me shit about any of my movies, I I, I delete it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It, you, can, you can give me shit about my artwork or my writing, 
or anything that I'm doing, but have you done something? You know what I mean? Well, that's like, my just, point. I mean, look, I get I my movies. I get so much criticism anyway. There's so many other places to just trash me. If you're gonna come on my page, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go go go. Start a thread on Reddit or some shit yeah, where I, I don't have to, to see it. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty fun. I can see him. Del- Who the fuck is this? Go delete, <laughs> deleting people's comments. Delete. Like, I really, do. I don't even comment. I just delete. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say you're so complete. Like, they'll say, "Dude, that movie was the worst piece of shit I ever saw. You should hang yourself." I say, "Thank you. I'll do that tonight." Yeah. You know, <laughs> and otherwise. <laughs> now you have and the mood. If I'm in a bad mood, I delete it. You know, and, and that's it. Now, now on, the, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, you do have uh, some diehard fans. I, I've seen people be like, "Oh, your your movies changed my life. I masturbate to them every day." Uh, oh wow! <laughs> so I mean, on the opposite, you know, you must feel great to have like uh, these diehard fans. Yeah, I mean, I, I, some people are more optimistic about my work than others. I think that's okay. I'm, I'm happy about that. Wow, well, but in art, man, you can't win all of them. Like, so, like yep. I am. I may think this guy's artwork is phenomenal, and the next guy may just not get it. And so, instead of saying he doesn't get it or understand it, he'll say that he calls it a piece of shit. Yeah. So it's just a matter of not being articulate enough uh, enough to tell somebody why that has no value to you well i mean i think that when somebody criticizes when they say as a fact this is this thing is a piece of shit (laughs) you know and i always think well you know that's an opinion you could say i would prefer it if you said in my opinion this is a piece of shit yeah (laughs) no you okay i do understand what you're saying but i would uh, Hey, that's a piece of shit. If I were you, I would go back and add a third eyeball, extra fingernails, and put a little blue around the edge. <laughs> so at that point, he still called he called my work shit. But yeah. at least he offered what, in his opinion, what it made it better. So that it, to me, it sounds like he has a, a more educated opinion. Okay, but like, I mean, why? What, I mean, it, all right, I see what you're saying. But I mean, that presupposes that shit is necessarily bad. You know, I mean, maybe maybe he likes shit. Yeah, maybe maybe he's a fecal feeling. You know, they, they exist, right? Brown showers and all that. Ah, oh, man, the glass bottom boat. I found that uh, I found that I uh, I talk shit about my own work more than uh, other people do. <laughs> my uh, my movie, I I, had a, I, I produced a movie on uh, Amazon Prime, and it's like all five stars, and uh, well, I think there's one four and a half star, but all good reviews. I'm like, oh, this is trash. <laughs> this is trash. <laughs> Why did Amazon publish this? Why did Amazon publish this movie? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do I do a little bit here and there, everywhere. Uh, James, yeah. you. You were trying to live stream a reaction, like you were watching your own movie with people on Facebook, yep. and they shut yep. your ass down. How, why are they shutting you down? Well, I, I had I had already screened a couple others, but then I I, I decided to screen that uh, SLC Punk, and they um they 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 just they let I got all the way through the movie, but then they flagged me and they banned me, and and they said I was breaking copyright, and I had to then send in the letter saying. It's my movie. I didn't. Pre- I, I have the license to everything, and I would. I don't even talk. I mean, Sony owns it, but Sony doesn't care if I show it. I mean, like it's, it was ridiculous. But yeah, I got banned. So, so the first thing I did as soon as they unbanned me is I, I reposted the movie, <laughs> and then they took it down again. So, uh, well, what is the name of said movie? Yeah, they banned. They they they, they took it. I said. Well, I mean, they said like just don't post it, and I said okay, and I and then I posted it. Oh, it was a SLC Punk. Yeah, it's called SLC Punk. <laughs> With a, but what I I was about to say is like the guy from Scooby Doo. What's his name again? Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard's in it. Everybody, everybody's in that movie. He James Merdino had everybody in that fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, what's his name from? Uh, uh, Devin Sawa, Jason, Jason Siegel, Jimmy Duvall, Annabelle oh, wow. Nash. Um, yeah. It's a cult classic. Br- Brian, if you have not seen That's pretty much. I actually, I did a, I did a pilot for a, a TV show called Future Cult Classic. It was supposed to come out on the Sci-Fi Channel. I guess it didn't get picked up. <laughs> but you never heard it. You, you never got the chance to see SLC Punk. No, I have not. Oh, yeah. It's um, I think it's you can get it free on Crackle. But, <laughs> oh, I have like Crackle and Tubi. Yeah, Crackle they, because Sony owns Crackle. So Sony, Sony bought it. They, they're the ones who released it. So Sony has it oh, on Crackle. It, Otherwise, it on the PlayStation. Buy it off of Amazon. And why bother buying it? You know, well, or I can give you a link. <laughs> no, I'll find it on Crackle. I mean, I did. I, I, I think. I think being creative and making. Like I did film stuff when I first got out of the military. I was doing. I I was doing like the twenty four hour competitions, and you know, writing screenplays. I ended up. I ended up selling a cartoon idea to a production company. Like, so I, I've, I've, I had my, I was dabbling in doing something, but it's just so expensive, you know, getting all the cameras and stuff like that. So no, no, see, I, okay. But here's the thing. I've been directing, I've directed 15 or so movies. I started when I was 24. I've always, they, the people give me money. I was hired by, by, little studios to make these movies. Oh, see, I wasn't at that level. I was trying to create a body of work to make my shit desirable. So I was still basically doing student films and shit. Oh, no, shit I'm, I'm one of these, student. like, Sundance assholes. Like, I go to Sundance and stuff with my movies. Oh, that's not an asshole. That's and, just and, that. And, that, and that then I get, like, elite. I was in, in the Cannes Film Festival, and I was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award and just bullshit like that. Like, oh, see, that's awesome stuff. I'm like, it's hoity-toity. <laughs> I got a friend of mine here in Atlanta named Tony Reams that does that with horror films. So he's taken uh, his horror film for the past 16 months or so. He's been touring it around all these different festivals. He went over to Glasgow, Scott, or Ireland or something for some huge horror festival over there, won some awards. So. The closet? Uh, no, he was. It's playtime's over. Is it, it's called playtime's over. Tony Reams, IMDb. See, yeah, I actually look stuff up. I know. Um, <laughs> playtime's over. Playtime's over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the one that is. It's all. It's all the oh, last. He, he he was one. Of, he did one of the episodes of VHS, but he's like a horror guy. He does horror. He well, he's one of the producers of VHS, and a little inside information: they've already filmed. Uh, yeah, I know. I have friends that have done segments on that. I know. I know. But I, he, he's yes. like, I know, I know, I know, like, I mean, I know a lot of the, I know a lot of the horror guys, but I'm, I'm not one of, the, I'm not, I'm more of like an artsy or kind of guy, but I mean, like, yeah, I, I definitely know who, like, I, the VHS guys, I know those guys, and I know, and I, I think I've seen some of these movies. A lot of these are short movies. Yes. Yeah, I, he has, he's, he done, he does segments. He's a short filmmaker. Um, but short horror films. It looks like it looks fun. Mm-hmm. They're filming Dead by Midnight too. Yeah, and it's it's like an anthology of different because Dead by Midnight is on his IMDb, and the way that was, uh, you can find that out there on the net. But it's a it's like some horror spirit goddess takes over a, a TV station, and so there's this section. And then there's this section, and there's this section, so that he could bring in different directors to do different things. And then now, with the sequel, it's gone to the web. Wow. So he's doing great. Yeah, he's, I mean, and he does a lot of music videos, too. Like, he does music videos for, like, Red Man and stuff like that. He's into the the old hip-hop, New York, Brooklyn-style hip-hop. Yeah. So he's like Wu Tang Clan and uh, Wu Tang Clan. He's uh, Fife Dog. All those guys. He's doing. He's doing videos with those guys. Now, uh, yeah, James. Uh, I didn't know. You know, and I seen it recently. You 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 live stream this one too. Uh, I believe I believe it's a live stream. But uh, 
You did that uh, movie that got uh, certified by Lars von Trier that did the uh, necro necro uh, yeah necro stuff. How how'd you get into that? Like what what brought you into that? Well, he he had seen uh, SLC Punk and he um he he had started that movie dog that movement Dogma ninety five movement That's and he he thought he figured like I'd, it'd be interesting to have me. He, I don't know. He assumed I was an art, uh, an anarchist or something. I don't know. And so he had me come out <laughs> to uh, Copenhagen, and and he has the, he converted this mili- this military base into a uh, a movie studio, and he drives around on a camouflage golf cart and uh, in camouflage, and I was there for their Christmas party, and so I met him, and he said, "I want you to hear the rules for the dogma rules," and I said, "Well, as an anarchist, if you call me an anarchist, I have to break all your rules," <laughs> and. Um, he said, "That's why. I, that's why I asked you." So I said, "Okay," and um, then that, like the the Christmas party, they had like a live sex act. I mean, they're crazy. These are crazy Vikings. Oh wow! And um, it's like so, a donkey show right in the middle of the. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're crazy. So, so uh, it's pretty close to it. So, so I mean, if you've seen his movies, that they, they, he gets pretty. Yeah, you're talking yeah, that's about probably not they, for me. He, he, necrophiliac. He did the movie Necrophiliac. No, no, no. no, 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 no my yeah. bad. It was it's, it's nympho nymphomaniacs. Is why I was making a That's joke. A nympho, nympho. I was making yeah, a, nymphomaniac. Yeah, I was making a joke on uh, the necro necrophiliacs. I was just making a uh, an illiteracy joke. But, uh, yeah, yeah. There is well, there is a movie called Necromantic. It's a German movie that's really, really, really sick oh. from from the eighties. From no, but he did that. Uh, what's that? What's that last movie he did? It's called a uh, Deer or something, and it has. Uh, it has. One oh, the of the, Jack, the house that Jack built. Yeah, the house that Jack built. That movie. I I'm so mad at that movie. Fuck that movie. No, <laughs> fuck that movie. No, it was okay. I, I I can see where he was going with it, but a, a lot of people claim that he's uh he's kind of like he kind of films movies just for the uh, shock factor. Well, I don't know. I mean, he wouldn't say that. I, but he, he, um, I mean, he's a very, he's a, he's a very, he's a depressed guy. He goes into like serious depression and stuff. But I mean, his, sometimes his movies, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't understand. He, I mean, yeah, his movies can be shocking. I mean, like this movie he did called The Antichrist is like, wow. I don't, I don't, I mean, like you can watch with Will the Foe, it's pretty dark. Um, so maybe I don't. I don't think that he would say that he does it for shock value, but man, I think maybe he does. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and, and, and he always has like big actors in it. He has Shia LaBeouf in the uh, in *Nymphomaniacs*. I mean, he always gets like these big actors to do these movies. Yeah. Uh, well, God, the guy's worth like sixty million dollars. He makes a lot of money doing these movies. Oh well, shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he did. He did *Dancer in the Dark* with Bjork in the movie. He in the movie cost. He raised. 14 million from New Line, but the movie only cost a million dollars to make, so he kept the rest. And that, <laughs> that's kind of what he does. So he, and on the side, they make porno. So just just to be clear. Oh, really? Yeah, Zentropa, his company, also make porno movies. Because um, again, they're Danish, so whatever. <laughs> so that's, that's where he gets his money. <laughs> well, I, no, no, I think his money comes. Doing um, melancholia. I think he. I think he enjoys the porno. That's more of the hobby part of it. Oh, okay. The work is is the stuff with Nicole Kidman and, and whoever. I mean, he gets all the big actors come and do his movies. He's a, Lars is like a, a huge, like important director. Though I happen to think he's kind of full of it, and he knows <laughs> I think that. So you know, whatever. Well, that's cool. You know, and you still and you still got your uh, your. Uh... I already forgot the fucking name because I have bad memory and I drink. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. What is that for again? What was the? What's the? Um, it got labeled. What'd you Dogma ninety five. Dogma, Dogma thirteen. Dogma ninety five. Dogma thirteen. There we go. It was. It was. The, it was the thirteenth Dogma movie. They only made twenty four, and that was the thirteenth. Oh. It was part of a whole film. Movie. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was the thirteenth of the. If you if you Google it, it'll give you the list of dog movies, and that's Americana is one of them. And then 
like Julian Donkey Boy was the other American. There's only two American movies. One, and, and then the one by that kid, um, Harmony Corinne, did, what, did what the else, other one. What else has uh, Harmony done? Well, he, he wrote Kids. And oh, from the 90s? Yeah, he well, he was a kid. He, he's still younger than me. He did, um, I mean, still, he'll always be younger than me. That's the way it works. But he did, um, he did, uh, he did Gummo. He's, I think he did this recently, this movie about, like, girls in Florida, very sex-oriented, like, sort of chicks in Florida. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. He's, with with the with the girl from um, uh shit the the High School Musical the High School Musical girl was in it Spring Breakers yeah was it Spring Breakers that's it that's it yeah okay. oh that movie was terrible <laughs> yeah it's, yeah he's he's not a, I don't think he's that good either but I mean people God that, damn that movie was hard to watch he's a sweetheart in the in the in the independent cinema world he, like he's like and I'm I never I think he's kind of a spoiled little sort of New York kid and and I never really did he make like did he make that movie with Matthew McConaughey recently? Did he make a movie with Matthew McConaughey? Is that the same guy? Which one? Oh fuck! Where he's like where he's like a drug dealer? Where Matthew McConaughey's a uh, this drug dealer that works? Are are you like he's like he's like a party guy? Maybe he's just a party guy, and he's like on a boat. He lives on a boat. Gosh damn it! What is that mud? No, that's called no. Nope, he's not mud. I think he maybe he lives on the beach bum. Beach bum. He doesn't live on a boat. He lives on the beach, or he lives like he goes. To, uh, I don't know if he, I don't know if that guy did beach bum, but I thought that it said in the. Uh -huh. I think uh, I think it said in the advertising. Uh, yeah, that's Harmony's movie too. Okay, yeah. see. Man, yeah. so he did the other American dog. There were the two American dog movies. That were made. The rest were Danish and French, and Swedish, and I think one Italian. It's a small world. I and had, um, it, well, I had crazy. London Sea Breeze. I had London Sea Breeze from uh, from that movie on the show uh, a while back, and so what a small world. Everything connects. <laughs> Everyone's connected now. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Um, I, see, like, if you saw if you saw the one I made, like I don't make that kind of dark sort of like gross movies that those guys make. So Americana is sort of a kind of a comedy. Like it's it's not dark. Like I mean, it ends it's sad, but it's not a dark like I don't know child porn type movies that these guys make. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't. What? <laughs> so child um, porn. So, if you, so if you, if someone, if someone went on a dogma binge and they binge watched all the dogma movies, uh, would yours stand out? Yeah, yeah, yeah but also um, a, movie called, a movie called Mifune, which is really good by Vinterberg. Vinterbergs are nicer. The Celebration and Mifune. Idiots is the one that Lars did. Is just well, whatever. And then Julian. And Donkey Boy again. I don't know what they're doing there, but you know. So I mean, like, but some of them are like the Vinterberg ones are good, like they're definitely better than mine. I mean, the, this movie, uh, cele it's called Celebration or or Festin, is really really good. It's a really good movie. That's legit. That's cool stuff. Who the hell is that, William? He said, "What's up, Brian Silverbacks?" Oh, I, I shared it. I got people that that check up on me whenever I'm doing stuff. Hell yeah, yeah, man. If, if if this would have posted in the right area, this would be. <laughs> I feel like we would have more people uh, sh uh, strolling in, uh, but it's still fine. I'm gonna convert it. Like once, like it's just a live stream, uh, but I will. Uh, I'm gonna convert it all, and I'm gonna post it uh, officially for Thursday. So it's gonna be everywhere Thursday, uh, everywhere possible. <laughs> I'm gonna convert it to a podcast format, but um. Man, James, it's been a year since I since I've uh, had you on the show. Uh, I felt like I feel like a lot of stuff has changed since then for me. Uh, we after we had you on the show, I think we were feeling pretty good, James. We were feeling really yeah. good. Yeah. And then we had we had Michael Jai White on the show after you, and we were feeling really good. I think it was after yeah. I think it was Michael Jai White. And I was like, "Oh yeah, the spawn." <laughs> I was, I was an undercover brother with him. Oh no shit! Uh, you, 
Uh, Undercover Brother 2 on Netflix, yeah. Hell yeah. Undercover Brother, that's great. <laughs> well, the sequel, Undercover Brother 2. <laughs> I actually yeah, watched I, it too. I, I liked I like uh, Michael John. I thought he was going to be the main character. I didn't know that he was a... Uh, uh, he is. Well, I well, know, but he's not the he's he's technically technically he's not the lead, and that his uh his uh, younger brother in the film is the uh, yeah. Well, if you look at the beginning, it when Barry Boswick is telling the guys, and his little gay son comes prancing out, and I'm one of the I'm one of the henchmen on the couch that watches the kid come out, and then when the kid says something stupid, I make I make this like face like oh. <laughs> that was my little. Uh, uh, that that was my moment. How many uh, how many henchman roles have you played? Uh, I usually go for the cop roles. Oh, okay. So, I've done probably four or five cop related roles because I was a cop for seven years and I was in the military for six years. So, whenever they say must be, you know have this experience or must have weapons certifications uh, the, the only the only caveat is i'm so fat that i can't fit into their their uniforms they're like your waist can't be bigger than 38 inches and i'm like well fuck most cops are fat asses so. yeah how did they, how do regular cops get in the <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't they, why do they get a standard issue <laughs> <laughs> why did they order some fatter uniforms come on I, that's just not very realistic honestly I, that's just lazy <laughs> no but i mean we were supposed to be a little bit more fit than i was that's kind of that's, that's kind of unreal tell, did you tell him it was unrealistic <laughs> yeah i know i know i say give me my 85 dollars so i can go home <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh but uh okay <laughs> good stuff but you hey you were in the walking dead you were a walking dead henchman you got to play alongside uh negan I did. dude that's one of the craziest experiences i've ever really had and it was it, it was the end of season eight so this was a big showdown between rick and negan right and there was probably like 400 extras that were all playing like negan's men and stuff but so we're all inside of the the sanctuary and he's up on a catwalk and he started this speech about how he's going to kick rick's ass and it never made it to the episode like it's only in the bonus stuff oh. but when he was on that catwalk doing that it was so powerful to listen to him just it sounded so passionate, dude. It was it was really something to behold because I also we also got to watch Negan kill a character with his bare hands while they were fighting in a circle. Yeah, and so so there's all kinds of cool stuff. And then I actually got makeup and had my face blown off. It was kind of it was, it, to me that was the most fun you know week and a half that I've had doing this. Yeah, you you, you did two episodes, Wrath and Wrath. Yeah, the last two episodes of of the of season, season eight. Yeah, I'm, I'm friends with I, I I'm pretty good friends with one of the actors, uh, Xander Berkeley, who was, oh, was play, he's playing. We weren't allowed to talk to people. We were just extras, you know. So there was five hundred of us, oh. so we we just moved like cows. Oh, <laughs> oh did what they about an Ozark? Did you have a pretty good part in Ozark? Uh, no, well, I had another scene that was uncut. That was cut. Uh, the first season of Ozark, I think it's episode six, is the one. I'm just one of the guys partying on the stairs when the main character walks by. Oh, like okay. so. But I was also I, I, we took photos of the. At that point, it was she was a little girl, but she was uh, Jason Bateman's daughter, and we she won some award at camp. And we were the camp counselor, so we all took to a picture with her that I guess was supposed to be like on her mantle, or she was supposed to look at it in a yearbook or something. But I never saw it. Okay, so all right, that's it. Uh, so then, okay, and then you had this movie you're going to do, future cult classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was the I, I was just an arm. All I was was a a. Basically, from the movie Psycho, my only job was to wear a trench coat that covered my arm and and walk right beside the camera guy 
and then pull the curtain and then there's the naked girl right there so i throw the curtain up and that was the end of that scene and then they had me just throw my hand up carrying a steel pipe so okay, they could that, i i i think i know the director you're talking about tim kirby i don't remember he had long black curly british hair guy? british guy yeah 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 tim kirby yeah yeah, yeah, I know him. I know, I know the guy. That, that sounds like an interesting show. So he's a really cool dude too, by the way. Yeah, no, he's I, a good guy. Uh, he does a lot hoping. of TV. He does a lot of English TV. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't done any like real acting. Acting. I was thinking I was going to take this time during the COVID little shit that we got, and I was going to like just find some monologues to do, and then just see if I could do them. I was gonna do like the, yeah, uh, maybe like the scene from Where's Our Dogs where he's cutting his ear off, uh -huh. and then maybe do, I don't know, I didn't know, I don't know what to do, but I think I, I think I have some, I have something, and I want to actually get a line somewhere. <laughs> you want to get a line in a movie? I want to, yeah. So I want to, I want to be cast. I want to. That's it. I want to be cast as opposed to picked out of a pile. Like I'd like, I'd like to, I'd like to have auditioned or someone say, "Dude, you would be perfect for this." So like, you have, you've never gone, you haven't yet gone in on an audition and in that whole process. No, man. All we have to do is send some Facebook photos and shit. Oh, because it's because it's background work. Okay. Yeah. Man, I can't even get yeah, back. They shoot with... a lot down there in Atlanta, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There is, there is, but I'm I, I'm so removed from. I don't like a lot of the people that I meet, and I meet background people, and I meet. You, you might know you you've done movie stuff. The background people act like they're so much better than the new. Well, background I know people. all about background people. They're the weirdest people. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I can't stand them. I, mean, I can't like, so, I, listen, I've been directing since I was 23 years old. But I've had many, many background actors on my movies. I hate really, they're like That's like another world. I yeah. Guess. So, I, and I, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to be lumped in with them. And I think the more that I do background, right, work, right not to. You're right not to. Definitely. <laughs> I, yeah. And plus, plus, I do not like them. They're, they're most of them are the jabroni ass people that occupy this country. Yeah. And I don't want anything to do with jabronis. Oh no, and they'll come. I mean, like I've had they, they come up to me like I had like. So you're directing the movie? Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and he's like, is this, do, do you know? Is this a do you know that the world is flat? You know, and, oh. you know, and, and I'm like, yeah. Can, can I? And I say to my AD, can can you just tell the extra man to like, you know, yeah. <laughs> can you tell? Where's the fucking PA? Where's the PA in charge of the fucking background people? The second assistant, the second, the second AD should like handle all that. You know, like I mean, come on. Like, I, yeah. Who, who I mean, finds these people, Jay? The <laughs> What's that? Who finds these people? The casting. Well, okay. you, I mean, like it depends. On the last movie I did, I actually went used fans, so that was great. They were all really great people because they were like friends of mine or fans or, or whatever, and that was part of a perk for the the the, the, the GoFundMe campaign. But normally, we hire a, a thing called Central Casting, and they just yep. they, they send us people. That's, I said, like, I that's like 20 central casting is where I find the, the email and say, send it in. If you're five, nine and you're a black male or you're a white male or you got hairy backs, like whatever the specifics are, you just send it in. Yeah. And see, that's what we get. Yeah, we, we, we will give a, our, my first AD, usually I give him the job to like break down who I'm going to need basically in, as, as background of 20 or 30 people. And then, and then they go to the casting director, cast director, set the central casting and then, People show up, and they emerge, and they're there, and you're like, "Hello," and 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 um, okay, <laughs> they're they're ninety percent jabronis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're really like, oh my god, they they're like, they try to they like they they will angle for for you know maybe he'll put me in a shot or yeah. you know, like, like so they 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 try to make they they treat me a little differently because they think and I'm like, yeah, I, I know. Still understand. <laughs> the movie I'm making, no one's gonna see this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Not gonna make you think. No one's gonna see. <laughs> oh man. Well, if you're if you're ever if you're ever shooting back down in Atlanta, let me know. 
Okay, I will definitely. Yeah. I mean, if ever we get out of quarantine, <laughs> if you ever, if you ever, shoot, yeah. if you ever shooting down in Vider, let me know. <laughs> Listen, you know what, dude? I do it though. I shoot in Louisiana sometimes. Oh no, shit. in New Orleans. Oh, that's pretty close. Yeah, I might get a couple harmonies down there. That's yeah, like, that's like. That's that's actually that's drivable. New Orleans is drivable. Yeah, to, well, I mean, it should be like you could. I mean, like I did a I did a, a horror movie there in in in, in one of those uh, old plantations. Um, I mean, like it's not that far from 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 where you are. Are you West Texas? Huh? Wait, I'm e- East Texas. I'm 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 at the border. Oh, so you got to drive. I'm at, no 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 I, no. It's a, you're, you're getting. I think you're getting. Your oh drive. no, East Texas. That's, yeah that's yeah. Pretty close to. I'm on the border. I mean, I'm on the I'm on the stuff. border of Louisiana. I'm a, uh, I'm like ten minutes. For, so 10 you, minutes. I, what is it like a two hour drive, three hour drive? It's probably like two and a half, three hours. Yeah. So I mean, like, if I'm shooting down there and we have like a day or two, I, I, yeah. I mean, like, every once in a while, because they have really good tax credits. So if I'm shooting a movie for two million dollars, they'll give me another five hundred thousand oh, dollars. That's awesome. Oh, right on. So I thought Atlanta. I thought Georgia had some shit like that too, but I don't know. It's good as it's not as good as it's Louisiana is thirty five percent, and and Georgia is more like twenty four percent. That's so. That's why all those James Bond movies would film down there. <laughs> yeah, that's why everyone's down there. It's, they, they all have that huge tax credit, and it's really corrupt, so it's easy to get. It's corrupt. <laughs> good God. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's come on, it's it's New Orleans. Of course, it's corrupt. <laughs> There's been a few people that have gone to jail over those tax credits down there. Oh, really? That's not good. But I mean, whatever yeah. works, whatever works works. Yeah, I, I know. But, you know. It's just, just, it's you know, it's it's a racket. Anyway, guys, I gotta jump. I've been on for a while, an hour now. Yep. Yeah. I gotta take a Zoom call. All right, my bad, man. <laughs> Hey man, thanks for coming on, and uh, uh, hopefully we can chat again sometime. You know, we were gonna have Joe McKell on the show, but he uh, postponed to next week, so hopefully that happens. <laughs> but, uh, uh, All right, well let me know because I'm probably still gonna be locked in in here, so you know. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll let you know, man. Nice meeting you, Brian. All right, we'll see you, James. You'll be good. Okay. Talk to you guys. Talk Bye. Boop. Well. Boop. Look, is he is he is he, a, is he like a frozen face now? Yeah, he's gonna be a frozen. I face. think like he's probably just gonna sit there and be frozen. <laughs> uh, he's probably like, is he making like a dirt face? I know. Dirt. What, what a horrible dirt. place. What a horrible place to freeze. <laughs> oh, but since I didn't get to, uh, I'm gonna finish my story. Uh, this was great though. This was fun so far. I didn't expect, you know, like. You guys, you, you guys really chatted uh, really well, and that's what I was, I was hoping for, for like the chatter of my guests, <laughs> just to, just to sort of take it over. Uh, like I said, I was gonna have, uh, we have Joe McHale supposed to be coming on soon. Uh, I've been, I've been in contact. Yeah, are you gonna talk about Tiger King? Yeah, I, actually, I have a beer related <laughs> to Tiger King called uh, Carol Did It uh, Sour Ale. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drink that beer uh, while doing the episode with him. <laughs> uh, apparently he's a big right on. apparently he's a big uh, he's a big craft beer guy, which is why he uh, is agreeing to come on the show. So, <laughs> so that's something, oh, right on. So that's something interesting. So I didn't get to get to it, and I said I was gonna get to it in this episode. I'm gonna get to it with you, Brian. Uh, so yeah, man, we uh, <laughs> going back to the off. Off, uh, off camera conversation. We were, uh, we were going pretty high. We were going pretty high. We were, uh, had our heads in the clouds. Everything was going smooth for us. Like I said, we had, uh, you know, me and, uh, me and one of my co-hosts were big fans of, uh, SLC punk growing up. It was, uh, you know, it was very quotable, you know, especially he was a punk rocker. And so SLC punk is one of those movies that you just watched. And so it was awesome getting, All right. so it was awesome meeting James and getting him on. And then, uh, and then we got Michael Jai White on the show, and that was awesome. It was amazing. And then we got uh, now. How did you score that? I just asked him. I said, "Hey, man, I, I, I like, really- how do you how do you ask him? Like, that's what I'm saying. How do you you just reached out on Facebook and said, "Hey, be on my podcast." Uh, no, I'm having to reach out to managers and whatnot. And uh, man, oh, okay, I'm having to reach out to people's managers, and uh, I've just been I've just been trying my best to uh, sort of build <laughs> build my connections well when you get 
When you get Danny Trejo on, I'll be on that show with you. Okay, I'll try. I'll try my best to get Danny Trejo on. Uh, but then we we went from him and we got uh, we got Jan Broberg on from Abducted in Plain Sight, the documentary that was famous last year. And uh, okay. And that episode that episode blew up, and it, it, it was like it's our it's our it's currently and still our number one episode because she had just got done doing the view. So she she got off the view. The very, oh wow! Yeah, she was on the view, and the very next day she was on our show. <laughs> I was like, "This is amazing!" You know, this is this is like we were we were put in a very good position um, to be seen. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, so Jambro, so now we're now we're flying high. We feel really super super good. Uh, May rolls around, and we get. Uh, interview with a band uh, Wednesday 13 uh, and the interview went well but our uh, our placebo effect that we had as far as like uh, we had to kind of check ourselves doing that interview like a lot of okay. like instead of like we were kind of riding high like hell yeah we're fucking big time we're getting big time we're growing so fast and then we were kind of treated like not by not by the band, but by like their uh, tour manager and whatnot. We were kind of treated like uh, <laughs> bums. <laughs> we were kind of treated okay. like bums, and it kind of like it just threw us completely off because like the previous band we interviewed treated us like royalty, like VIP passes. Here's you know you can get into the show and whatnot, and then it just was a complete 360. That kind of hurt morale, but it didn't hit, hurt our stuff. However. We got, uh, when we interviewed Jason Ellis from the Jason Ellis Show, professional skateboarder, uh, radio talk show host, and whatnot, it, it went so bad. That interview, <laughs> <laughs> that interview went so terrible, because mainly we had, a, we had a buddy that would hang out with us, and uh, he, was, he was great for one of the interviews. He just kind of stood back or whatever, but I guess uh, he was going through something that day, and so he just starts being... <laughs> He just, he's like telling this guy that he needs to work. He's a professional skateboarder and these, <laughs> our friends like drunk and telling this guy he needs to work on his 360s or whatever and work on his skateboarding moves. <laughs> and he's like, it goes, it goes so bad. Jason Ellis, he goes on to the radio and shits on us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I mean, it was, I say he shat on it. It wasn't like super bad shitting, but it was kind of like, Okay, this is this is gonna hurt us, and <laughs> and we haven't and we haven't really been able to bounce back since that day. We had to take a step back from interviews. Uh, we've been just trying to grow. Uh, we, we 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 spent the rest of that year and up until right now uh, just trying to grow naturally without interviews, and so. That's where we've been. Well, <laughs> that's where we've been. I, if I can offer, if I can offer a little bit of advice, uh, a little structure goes a long way. So if you have like uh, segments, I think of it like morning radio. Yeah. To where, all right, we're going to talk about what was your favorite movie of the past since we last did a podcast or what's your favorite song some so, some sort of something that's regimented so that when you get dead air you don't just sit there and go oh, oh what should we talk about that way that you have these things that you can go to and people will expect to hear them and then that'll help keep conversations moving because it sounds like you're very free and kind of just wanting to shoot the shit but if you have a lame guest on that doesn't quite know how to push the conversation or the conversation starts to go in a direction where you're not happy, having those those structure points will make it easy for you to come back to something and get it back on the rails and avoid dead air. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree. Uh, and like I, you, know, you should you should have seen how we we used to have layouts like we had layouts of the entirety of the interviews and whatnot and uh we did the set like we did that with uh jason ellis man we had this layout of everything we were going to talk about what to go to next but it's just like why I, I couldn't get the room under control and it just like people people were literally fighting above my head because one of my co-hosts started fighting <laughs> live 
with Jason Ellis started fighting above my head, just arguing. And I'm like, uh, fuck, shit. Oh, god damn it. Shut up, everybody. I'm trying to interview this guy still. This guy still. It, sound, it sounds like you brought a. You brought an unprofessional jabroni to a professional thing that you're trying to do. Yeah, that's, that, that was a mistake. That was my mistake. And, uh, and it really cost me some co hosts because they're like. It just kind of, it just kind of hurt the whole situation. Everything was just kind of, kind of a downhill from there. But we've been slowly building it back up. Uh, we we do life advice here and there. We do some kind of like we do special segmented episodes. Uh, you know, just do. I even have I have I have a I had a quite I had a, a little bit of stuff uh, written out right here in case of a uh, in case of dead air. But I mean, everybody was very talkative and could control the conversation. <laughs> I mean, it was good. I, I, I didn't even need it. So, good stuff. Uh, All right. Well, <clears throat> let me let me go ahead and plug my shit before you kick me off. Okay. Yeah. You go ahead and plug your stuff. All right. So I need you guys to follow me on Instagram. It's B R Y A N S I L V E R B A X. Just look up the word Silverbacks in any search engine. And it'll get you to me. I need I need some eyeballs because Loggerhead comes out. It's coming out next month. I got the Loggerhead art contest. This is my first comic book I've ever written or drawn. And I want it to be kind of a big fucking deal. Hell yeah, man. I hope I hope you all the success, man. I I'm I'm I've been watching you. Uh I love everything you're doing. I love uh I love the Apex thing you're doing. The Apex thing looks really cool too. The uh what's oh. By the way, Apex Apex lives in the same world with Loggerhead, by the way. So Apex is a mutated killer whale man. And the, I've already written the issue that he's in, and it's off to the layout guy. So that'll be finished probably in like two and a half months and ready to ready to print. But so Loggerhead comes out, and then by the end of the year, Apex will come out. And there's a third person that's going to come out after Apex. And then all three of those guys are going to go on an adventure where they're all three in the same story. That's awesome, man. You have that shit planned out. So they all... Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell I got yeah. to. Hell yeah. You're competing against Marvel and DC and Image. Like, you're competing against people that have a way... Uh, they've been doing this for a long fucking time. And they've got a lot of resources behind them. So the only way for me to achieve any success is with somewhat of a plan. Yeah, man. Uh, also, on top of all that, you also do, uh, what is that you're doing? You're doing commission-based work? Where uh, How does that work? That someone reaches out to you and you... That's... <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's how the bills get paid. So if, let's say, someone likes my artwork and... Uh, they want to own a comic book that I drew the cover of. Now, most of it goes through Instagram and Facebook, just through private messages. Hey, Brian, I'd like you to draw a picture of Batman on a comic book. How much is that? And then I'll say 50 bucks. And they're like, all right, here's my PayPal money. Send it to me when you're done. That's generally how it works. Do you do uh, caricatures? I do like you talking about like when you go to Six Flags and shit. Yeah, like people you draw like. Can you do like uh, uh, people? No. Okay. I didn't no. Do nope. I don't. I don't. I don't do really good likeness work. Like I don't. I'm not a portrait artist, okay. so I'm not gonna draw it and make it look just like Gal Gadot playing Wonder Woman. I'll draw it and it'll look like a comic book version of Wonder Woman, you know. And I'm also not the guy at Six Flags drawing you with the big ass head <laughs> and the little and the and, and the and the little nose. Like I, I don't do that stuff either. <laughs> I didn't know if uh, I, I guess <laughs> it's wrong to assume that an artist can just do it all. Do all the artists, all the art, all the artwork. Yeah, I, I can't do. I can't do all the art stuff. I I don't paint. Uh, I barely draw. Like I, I I fake my way through drawing, just enough to have people like it. That's about it. <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, we'll close on that. Thank you so much, Brian, for being on the show. Hopefully, we can uh, get you back on uh, some someday, and we can have like uh, I, I want to. Yeah, when you get Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. When I get Danny Trejo. When you get I'll Danny get you Trejo. Because I Danny Trejo, 
I designed one of the t-shirts for his website. So one of my shirts is an official Danny Trejo shirt that I designed. But I'm one of, I, he follows me on Instagram and reacts to my posts and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. So That's awesome. So uh, That's legit. Hey, you know what? I, that's, I, I, like, he, he, he's got a million and a half people following him on Instagram, but he only follows like 466 people. <laughs> and one of those people is Brian Silverbacks. Hell yes, yes. Hey, you know, it's quarantine season, so, you know, he's not doing anything. <laughs> so maybe we can figure something out. I, 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 I look at his Instagram stories. He's still out there selling tacos. He just dropped a new, a new cookbook on like uh, 76 pages of different taco recipes or something like that. Hell yeah. So he's still putting in the work. He's still putting in work. But he doesn't come to many he doesn't come to many conventions out here on the East Coast. So I'm probably never going to have a chance to meet him in person. Well, maybe one day, maybe get a, a pay him to come come and sit at a booth with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I can afford that. But thank you for having me on, man. No I hope the podcast goes well for you. I hope that Joe McHale works out and y'all have a good time. And to anyone that's watching, Support creativity, support people doing shit and getting off their ass, and stay creative. Thank you, Thank you. We are a million simple